An electrically powered airliner is within reach according to Airbus. The company is already flying its E-Fan light training aircraft, which are due to enter service by the end of 2017. Now it's stepping up research aimed at achieving a fully electrically powered airliner in the 70 to 90 seat class. The E-Thrust program is a joint effort by Airbus and Rolls-Royce to develop an electrical distributed propulsion system. Yeah, with this uh, technology project, we try to achieve to make regional aircraft with 70 to 90 seats starting and landing fully electrical in the next decades uh, to come. The advantage will be nearly no noise around airports and inhabited areas, no direct emissions with CO2, NOx or other ones, and by that a more comfortable way of flight, especially for the neighbors uh, of the airport and for the passengers. E-thrust involves several fans installed along the wing that are powered by electricity from a battery charged by a single gas turbine engine. This technology is a combination of uh, combustion technology, so there will be a, a turbine, combustion turbine on board. The combustion turbine will uh, generate mechanical power, which is operating to a generator and then charging batteries. There's a second point, the real electrical engines, which are distributed along the wings. So we see here six electrical engine propulsion units, a fan with an electrical motor, and so we have the capability to start fully electrical, to land fully electrical and to recharge the batteries on flight level during the cruise flights. One key aspect of the technology is the use of superconductivity in the cables, generators and motors. The point is with uh, today engines who have power to weight ratios of some kilowatt per kilogram, for instance typical for airplanes 6 to 8 kilowatt uh, per kilogram, for an original aircraft, we essentially need to improve this ratio, power to weight. And one key enabling technology will be superconductivity. With superconductivity, we will have better engines, electrical engines, and we will save weight for the cables. For instance, uh, if you have a cable bundle for 4,500 amperes today, which has a weight of around uh, 12 to 15, even sometimes 20 kilogram, then in comparison to that, the superconductivity cable will have a weight only of a few grams. And this is not a dream. Superconductivity is existing today in different fields of technology. We need to bring it together with our partners to industrial application for engines and cable bundles. We asked AIN technology specialist Terry Dubois about the feasibility of this concept. This would be very significant. Uh, this is a much smarter way of using energy. Instead of having, say, variable regimes uh, in your engine, you have an engine that runs at a constant regime, constant rotor speed, if you wish, constant, constant RPM, and you have electric fans which are much more suitable for variations, for giving high power at some point and cruise power at another point. So this is much smarter use of energy. It's very significant because otherwise, without superconductivity, you have huge cables that just weigh too much. Basically, they would be too heavy. So superconductivity allows you to have small cables with, let's say, a weight that would be suitable for aviation. And this technology, superconductivity, has started being used in other industries. It has left the laboratory and has started being used in other industries. So it's still too early for aviation and we are maybe, maybe decades away from superconductivity in aviation, but this would be very, very useful for aviation. It's very realistic, but it's very long term. Uh, they face a lot of, of obstacles. For example, they face uh, obstacles in power density in uh, batteries. So they don't even call them batteries. Well, what they will use maybe something else. Maybe this will not be batteries. So they call it something like power storage or energy storage devices. Uh, another big challenge will be superconductivity, which we uh, referred to previously. And another challenge will be the connection, or, well, say the, the optimization between the big conventional engine and the smaller electric fans. So the big one is relatively conventional, but still you have to optimize it for this kind of use, which is very different. So you no longer have to have uh, takeoff power, for example. You just need cruise power. So this may lead to very different designs. So th there are quite a, a lot of challenges. In my lifetime, I do expect to fly in an electric aircraft. For sure, I think I will fly in a 
small electric aircraft, two-seater, four-seater maybe, that's probably a matter of a decade or 15 years. And Airbus has proven it's very well advanced, very well advanced technology. Uh, a lot of progress has happened recently. But as for airliners, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty. For, for example, Airbus itself is unsure about when this could be available. Sometimes they refer to 2030, sometimes they refer to 2050, and still unclear when we will see that. Airbus and Rolls-Royce believe they're on track to deliver in-service electrically powered airliners within the next 25 years.